It was the 40th anniversary issue of the Pendleton Times. Bob Billiter, owner of the paper, was 26, youngest editor in the state of West Virginia. He and his wife have been tracking stories all week. Yeah, I've put a thousand miles in this buggy in the last four and a half days, and I am tired. I hate to be morbid, darling, but if that wrecked freight train had been a passenger car, we'd have had our story. Yeah. I would have been sick for a week at the sight of it. Bob? You think they need a hand? Uh -huh. I'd say it was just some couple. I'll observe with nature. Well, I guess we'd better be going. An old married couple like that. They weren't an old married couple. They were two boys, amateur spelunkers of cave explorers. They had entered the cave at 10 a.m. that February morning. This was 2 p.m., six hours later. Oh, I'm nuts. Should have taken the extra batteries from the car. Yes, sir. We'll be out soon anyway. That hole leads to the neck. Then the climb? No. Right with you. I haven't thought for sure. Ralph. It's the same dead end we came to an hour ago. Are you sure? It's my cigarette butt. We're lost. Foundation, move them, make them laugh. Begin here, like this one. I'm Paul Stewart. This is a story that began as a search for a headline, a 40th anniversary headline for a small town paper in West Virginia. It nearly ended as a nightmare and a tragedy. They're ready, they're rolling. The presses are rolling on deadline. serves Pendleton County 700 square miles and Pendleton 7,000 citizens. The 40th anniversary was tomorrow. Genuine story, some color, some noise. Like a murder. That'd be nice. Well, we have them in Pendleton County, but not when you need them. Honey, here's the proofs on the freight car pictures you took yesterday. Uh -huh. Well, let's use this one. All right. Bob. Do you remember that car we passed near Trout Rock Cave yesterday parked there? Huh? Oh, sure. Why? Well, I passed by there an hour ago. It was still there. Broken down, probably. No sign of anybody around there? I couldn't see anybody. 
I wonder if it's still there. Come on, Will. Let's take a look. Bloodhound Gulliver, we call it. Well, do you think anybody knows we're in here? Anyone? No left turn. You shouldn't have taken it. We should have taken a right turn. We took the right turn. Then it was the wrong one. We should have made a left. Chimneys. Those are the caves over in Mount Solon. They're spelunkers. You think maybe there's some trouble? That they're in the cave, lost maybe? <laughs> Come on. The car broke down. They're out of gas. Anything. Gas. Plenty of them. All right. So there's gas. since early morning, for all we know. Over 24 hours in all, for sure. Engine turns over, you say? She runs. There is someone in that cave, Cunningham. Could be. Let's go get some lights and take a look. While we're gone, have the Washington authorities check on the ownership of this car and find out what the story is. Let's go.
on this side. Go in about a hundred yards. Be thorough, but don't take any wrong turning, okay? Doesn't seem very fresh. Been lots of spelunkers in here over the years, and lots of them look candy, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Sure. Heck. We've given it a good try. I think we're on the wrong track, Billiton. Let's go. Billiton's hunch that someone was freezing, starving to death in the underground labyrinths of Crack Rock Cave, sat on his back like a stone weight. He couldn't shake it off through all of State Troopers Cunningham's report, the Buick's ownership. Hey, the Plymouth belongs to Kenneth Brower, 62 Oakhurst Drive. The Washington police say they called first. Pennsylvania 43790. There's no answer. And they called next door and checked. The Browers have a son, 17. His name is Ralph B. Sergeant, I All right there. now, Billiton. He might be climbing over the mountains, for all we know. Or visiting his girlfriend, anything. Go on. That's it. They called again, still no answer. The family could be on vacation. Well, we'll keep an eye on the car for the next couple of days. Couple of days? If someone is in that cave in a couple of hours, they... We were just in there, weren't we? They could have been around one wrong turn, so weak that they couldn't answer. All right, that's a possibility. Anything's a possibility. Even if they're sacked out somewhere under a tree with a bottle of beer, or he or they have hitchhiked home and didn't get there yet. Now, we were just in there, Billiter. Now, what more can I do for you? Nothing, I guess. <laughs> Washington? 
Oh, yeah. Bob, it's your call to the Brower House. say anything. But you're driving yourself cuckoo with this thing. Well, Eunice, listen, somebody from Washington owns that car. And they're not in the cave. Okay, they're not. How many places are there to stay around here? Five. If you count Miss Tennyson's broken down grand hotel. Well, if they are around, they, they went to Bondi's garage for help. But you started the car. Well, let's give it every doubt. Well, maybe they couldn't for some reason. Uh, if they are around, uh, somebody from around here would have heard of them. What I have to do is, is check everyone. Bob. Oh, honey, listen, I have been in that cave, and I know what it can be like. around here. Now, I have checked every motel, hotel, and service station for 30 miles around. I even checked the, the hospital. Sheriff, nobody around here has seen or heard anything about anybody from Washington. Now, you tell me, where are the people from that car if they're not in Trout Rock Cave? Whoa. Whoa, boy. Could be some answer to that question that neither you nor I know about, couldn't there? You've been traipsing around this county like a prospect looking for some story to mine for the 40th anniversary edition of the paper, right? Sure I have, but... but don't let it put you out, son. Doing good work around here, county needs you. A thing like that could work on a man's mind. You have a point there, sure. We're all human beings. No more, no less, too. Now, scoot on home. Maybe your wife's got a good supper waiting. Go on, scoop. I'm scooping. I'm convinced, honey. They are not in the cave. You look knocked out. I am. How are you, honey? I'm fine. It's funny. The thing bothers you and bothers you sometimes. Even when it's irrational sometimes. Everybody else's logic is perfect. All right. Let's have it. Honey, could I have one more try? If it doesn't work, that's it. Here we go again. Hello. Yes, operator, try it again.
and I run a newspaper, and we want to ask you one question. Do you have a son? Why, yes, we haven't heard from it. Do you know something? What's happened? Make sure about the car. Was, was he driving a Plymouth? Washington plates, number ZA123. Yes, that's our car. What happened? Well, we think we found him. Mrs. Brower, we'll get back to you just as soon as we possibly can. But I've got to know, has anything happened to him? Mrs. Brower, will you please hang up? I want to use this telephone immediately. Get Cunningham. What do you think I'm doing? <laughs> chamber in this branch. They didn't come this way. No, we got to be here someplace. Hey! Hello! Can you hear me? There used to be a ledge here someplace. Maybe the other direction. Not like that. That goes off in a million directions. There's the ledge. <laughs> hey, there they are. The story on the rescue not only made a banner headline for his 40th anniversary issue, but broke on the front pages of the big Washington and Baltimore dailies. The two boys, Ralph Brower and Martin Stern, recovered completely after a day's hospitalization. A grim note was revealed when it was learned that the two boys were on a week's holiday from school and might not have been missed had not Bob Billiter persisted as he did on deadline. Mm -hmm. 